Um, what are some ways, maybe we can end with this, that you feel like we can continue to have conversations like this? Do you have any ideas or thoughts on just how to continue to normalize, you know, um, hmm. yeah. Like, like but just just create, you know, space where people can be honest about it. I go back and forth. I was even, now, if you can tell, as I was asking the question, I was trying to think of how to ask the question well, because it's this weird balance of not wanting to glorify it, you know, because I've been in, I remember when I was in college, I was in accountability groups and, you know, there were times where it really just felt like, well, we're all just kind of sitting here to just feel good about, feel better about the yeah. bad parts about our lives. It's not that, right? right. We want healing, we want wholeness. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so how do we, you know, I don't know, I don't know if you have any practical ways just beyond a one-time conversation on Sunday morning, what are some ways to, to normalize this and continue to practice? Well, as I understand it, you began with John Five last week, right? Uh, yeah, we talked about it a little bit, yep. Yes, yeah, so the yep. question, do you want do you to want be healed? Well? Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people who don't. We, we yeah. actually love being ill. We yeah. love the identity it gives us. We love um, the attention it might yeah. get us. There's a lot of ways, right? Yeah. And so now, <laughs> so it can be difficult because when I'm with someone who I know doesn't want to be well, yeah. I don't want to quit on them. But yeah. I also don't want to keep pouring in more of what's actually giving them death. And so yeah. we do want to ask the question, how are you seeking wellness? Not, not are you achieving it, not are you like, I'll keep going along if yeah. you've made enough progress this week, yeah. but actually, how are you seeking wellness and how can I be a part of you seeking wellness? Yeah. And that's a really tricky question because it doesn't say, are you succeeding? Are you successful enough that yeah. you haven't come far enough? Because a lot of people fear that. Yeah. Uh, just uh, in my email uh, uh, today, I got a, a text from somebody who, who in their childhood, they went through something really, really brutal. And, and in these adult years, it's been, uh, it's kind of cascaded on top of her. And she was doing a lot better. And then she had just sort of a relapse of all the worst emotions. And yeah. she was afraid yeah. that I would be like, oh, I thought you were doing good and now you're back here. Yeah. And, and, and she was afraid that I wouldn't love her in that spot. Of course I'm gonna love her in that spot. We love you wherever you are. But like the Lord, we're always looking for, how are we moving? Yeah. How are we seeking toward wellness? Yeah. So we don't demand movement, but we also don't tolerate uh, loving our brokenness and staying in it and wanting yeah. to stay in it. Yeah. It's a real tricky, uh, yeah. I don't know, like in between. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good word, man. Have anything else you want to? Thanks for having yeah. me. This was super fun. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you got to hang out with us. And, and like I said, this is, this is not a, a normal conversation, but, no. but we hope it, it becomes one. And I love what you said about wholeness. I'm trying to remember. So physical, spiritual, mental, relational. I get. The, I mean, I know there's more. <laughs> yeah, those, those are, are those the big, big four. Yeah. Big buckets. And uh, I know for me, that was one of my takeaways is is to start viewing myself holistically. I'll give you an example of this. You will appreciate this. But um, something. So when I prepare my sermons, um, there are times where I feel like you probably get this. I feel like, man, it was just going well. Like the Holy Spirit was just it was flowing. And mm -hmm. then there are times where I'm just like, wow, I'm going to go walk around the mall because I got nothing. And uh, last week was one of those times where it was great. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this was so great. Like I just felt like God was just like flowing. And then I realized, uh, I was like, oh, I got really good sleep last night. <laughs> like I, re I realized the last times I felt creative, inspired, whatever you want to use, were actually the times where I got good sleep. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, that's interesting, because I spent so much time over-spiritualizing it, like, oh man, why isn't God speaking? But really, I got four hours of sleep last night, and my mind just isn't sharp. And so, uh, but yeah, so just kind of thinking about all the layers and, and how it all affects one another. It's a lot easier, honestly, for me to just think, you know, when I open my computer, God's either going to speak or he's not going to speak. Um, but... I feel like God's been saying, Sammy, could it be that, you know, yeah, that's not that simple, you know, that I want you to get sleep, I want you to eat well, and I want your mind to be at a place where, you know, you actually feel inspired. That's different. Yeah. yeah so. This is fun. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. I could, okay. I could actually say like. I'm looking for you for affirmation. Like, yeah, well, is that good? Is that true? Or am I just making that up? So uh, <laughs> there's a, uh, a guy who is sort of like one of the people taught by Dallas Willard and Dallas used to complain that there wasn't a good curriculum for yeah. like really like learning to like become an apprentice of Jesus. And yeah. so he challenged this guy. His name is James Bryan Smith. And James yeah. Bryan Smith wrote a three-part series 
called uh, Good and Beautiful God, The Good and Beautiful Life, and The Good and Beautiful Community. And yeah. it's designed to be walked through as groups. And there's like, I don't know, 10 chapters in each one yeah. where you read like 10 pages yeah. about something. And then each chapter, because it's designed to be done in a week, yeah. has a spiritual discipline to practice. Yeah. So I'm thinking it's going to start with fasting or it's going to start with something like that. Yeah. First spiritual discipline that he wants you to practice, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> like That's get right. eight hours of sleep. Stop yeah. acting like all the world's on you and that you can't let yeah. it go. Yeah. And trust that your father has it and that he gives his beloved sleep. Yeah. So first spiritual discipline. Sleep. sleep. I heard someone say once, I think it was a Christmas conference, that sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is sleep. Mm. That's, a, that's a good word. So, anyways, Christmas. thanks again, Steve, for hanging out with us. Appreciate you guys. Thanks. See ya later.